Okay, so the GH4 has been out for ages now. Um, I've had the camera for, for years, uh, but I, and it's a, it's a brilliant camera. But obviously now that the uh, GH5 is out, there's a lot of people picking these up because the prices come right down, and it's still a great, great camera. Um, so I thought I'd do a couple of little tests, and just for those sort of newbies out there, and also for perhaps the people that just haven't really got into slow motion much with the camera, um, I thought I'd do some tests and show you what I think is the best settings um, to use for G slow motion on the GH4. Uh, now, first of all, if you just go into the settings, obviously you start at 4K, um, that's your highest quality, but we don't have any slow motion options there. Um, the next one down is our all intra 50p. Uh, now, this is for PAL in the UK. Obviously, if you're um, NTSC, that would be 60p. Um, so that gives you the ability, even though it records it in um, a standard frame rate, so it will play back at normal normal speed. It's giving you twice the amount of frames, so you can slow that down in post. You can you know make the the actual clip in the timeline twice as long, so it's you end up with 50% slow motion. Uh, and that's obviously at uh, 200 megabits, so that's quite a high uh, megabit rate as well. So that's the quality is pretty good. And then obviously you've got your standard 50p, and then you go into your um, VFR option. So if you select that, you can then go down into your variable frame rate uh, and set what frame rate you want. Now there's a bunch of different sort of, you know, kind of like time lapse options, but I really wouldn't mess around with that too much if I was you. That's more for um, doing a very very quick time lapse in camera. It's much better to do use the um, the stills option if you're going to be doing a, a time lapse. So I'd kind of ignore all these low numbers uh, and that you know when you get 27 frames per second it's just a, ever so slightly slow so I just really wouldn't bother with that. There might be some specific reasons you want to have a just ever so slightly slow motion but for me slow motion needs to, needs to look like slow motion or it kind of looks a bit odd. It's just, it's just slightly off kilter sort of timings. So anyway I would really only sort of um, categorize slow motion from sort of 50 frames per second and higher. So you have your 50 frames per second, uh, your 62, your 75 and your 96 and that's all the options that the GH4 gives you in camera. Now um, as I said I've been doing a lot of uh, testing with these so let's have a look at a bunch of clips and then we can do real side-by-side -side comparisons and see exactly which which um, frame rate gives you the best bang for the buck. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so this first clip is just uh, 4K, obviously not slow motion, but as this is the best possible uh, image quality you can get at the GH4, I thought it was nice to put it in there just to compare the then uh, slow motion options. So then let's have a look at our uh, 50p all intra. Uh, and so in theory, this is the highest quality sort of slow motion option you're going to get because the, uh, the bit rate is, is higher. Um, now in my test, if we now compare this to the the 50p VFR, which is at half the bit rate. Um, but in my opinion, they look absolutely identical. I think you're only really going to notice um, the, the VFR uh, having a little bit less bit rate if you've got a very changeable uh, scene. So if you've got lots of action, lots of movement, the camera's moving around a lot, and that, that's what stresses the bit rate. The actual image quality still looks fantastic if the camera's not moving or if there's not a ton of movement in the scene. So I would, I would say, you know, for most people, the VFR, yeah, go ahead and use it um, if that's the, the rate that you, you want. Uh, the main advantage you have with the um, All Intra is that you retain sound recording um, so then if, you, if you're if you recording you know, standard stuff and you're not sure if you want to make it slow motion or not, then that's a great option just to film in 1080, 50p, all intra, retaining your sound, and then later on if you want to, you can stretch that clip out uh, twice as long in the timeline um, and choose to have slow motion or just have regular recording and then just lose every other frame. So that's a big bonus for the, uh, the all intra um, 50p option. Now let's have a look at our the next step down in the VFR list, which is 62 frames per second. Now, in my opinion, now this is what I'm going to give the big thumbs up because this now really looks like slow motion. I mean, it really is um, uh, you know slowing down the action enough so it appears like slow motion. I mean, they all do that to some degree, obviously, but this feels like slow motion to me. If you're if you're seeing some sort of sports action or something like that, that actually looks like um, you know proper slow motion. Now let's go down to the next one, so 75 frames per second VFR. Uh, now this is where I think the quality really starts to take a hit. If we have a look at the, um, if you look at around the chair there, you've got, you're getting quite a lot of moray and aliasing and everything just looks a bit softer. And then if we look at uh, 96 frames per second, it's, it's much the same as 75, but just a tiny bit softer again. So there you go, that's the, um, 
the sort of slowest option there. So it really does look like slow motion, but yeah, it really is quite soft. Now let's have a look at these all side by side. Now I'm gonna be posting this in 4K and obviously these videos are in 1080. So you're already getting a sort of, um, you know, a, a close look at it anyway, because we're already enlarging everything by two um, just to get out to 4K for you. Um, so if we look at them side by side, you can see here that the, yeah, those, the 96 and the, the 75, they really are, you know, quite a lot worse than the 62 frames per second or 60 or 50. Um, so in my opinion, I really think that the, the, the sort of the bottom falls out of this plan here past 62 frames uh, VFR. Um, you know, if you really, really need the slow stuff, then by all means go down to 96. Um, I don't think it's worth using the 75 at all unless you've got a specific speed you know, reason for that sort of uh, that choice. But as the sort of, um, yeah, the quality drops off a lot after 62, you may as well go all the way to 96 and just have the extra, extra slow motion if you are needing that extra slow, slow down sort of effect. Um, so let's have a look at these even bigger side by sides for you. So yeah, so between the, the all intra and the 50 frames per second um, VFR, I, in these tests, when the camera's not moving and there's not a lot of action, I really cannot see any difference. Um, so I really wouldn't worry about choosing the all intra. If you are just purely going on image quality, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, say, yeah, definitely go for the 200 megabits because the, 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 the difference is, you know, I really can't spot the difference is what I'm saying from these tests. Like I said, if you've got a very, very changeable scene, uh, lots of action, lots of movement, then that's when the megabits, the bit rate is going to be strained. So that's when those, those extra 100 uh, bit rates, uh, megabits per second rather, should really help you. Um, so just bear that in mind. But as far as I can see, the quality difference is very, very negligible. Uh, now, if you look at the difference where I say the sort of the cliff is here in terms of quality between the 62 and the 75 up nice and close, uh, that's, you can see right there, you know, we've got some real jaggies going on. We've got these sort of strobing lines going across the chair. The bike is what I focused on, by the way, you know, that's why it's in shot. It's basically my sort of like um, my test card, as it were. Uh, so, yeah, you can really see that the 62 doesn't look too bad. It looks slightly softer, you know, than the 50p ever so slightly, but... It really the big drop does come after um after sixty two frames per second, and you can that this is you know evident here. You can see that the, the the label on the bike just looks really smeary, and it's mostly those sort of jaggies that you're getting around the high, high contrast edges and that stro strobing and more. Um, I mean that's what really does it for me. Um, that just looks ugly. Um, so yeah, that's why I would say steer clear of anything slower than sixty two frames per second. Um. So in summary, yeah, so I mean that, you know, I've kind of said it all there, but um, I would basically say use 62 VFR. I think that's the best trade-off between actual looking like slow motion uh, and having decent, you know, 1080 quality. Um, obviously, yeah, if you are going to be filming and, and you don't know whether you want it to be slow motion or not and you're filming and you need the audio, then by all means use uh, 50p or, you know, all intra um, as your top quality option. Um, and then you've got the ability to slow it down half in post. And remember, this is I'm talking about PAL, but that just means it's 60p if you're if you're NTSC. So that's your option there from from 60p to then turning it into 30 frames per second if you're, you know, USA bound or what have you. Um, so yeah, so you know, possibly you might want to go down to 96 VFR if you really need to slow things down, but it really does start to look a bit crap. Um, another couple of options that's worth you considering is to film in the higher quality, um, you know, more normal frame rates, and then use something like Twixter or Optical Flow to slow down your footage, you know, further, because that, uh, you know, adds frames in between frames um, artificially. Now, you get a lot of artifacting and problems with that, and the sh it's just a shot-by-shot -shot basis of whether it's going to be uh, any good or not. Um, but if you really, you know, say, for instance, you, you filmed a scene and you it's not long enough you know you have to make that that shot longer and you didn't film it in slow motion so you're like oh my god what am i going to do i have to fill that gap there that you know this this i have to draw this out then by all means investigate twixter or optical flow and it may just save your life and you know make your edit work by inventing slow motion out of nothing but it, the, the shots do have to be very um 
perfectly kind of like laid out if there's too much detail in the background like behind the person that's being you know that's being you're, you're turning in slow motion you'll get lots of weird sort of artifacting and weird kind of stuff happening so bear that in mind but it's definitely worth considering anyway i hope that was uh, useful guys um like i say i think 62 vfr on the gh4 is a really lovely lovely uh hd quality um and you know if you want it to look like slow motion then that's what I tend to choose for the vast majority of my slow motion just because it's it's the best balance where it's still looking pretty good, pretty clean, um, and it does actually look like slow motion. Anyway, there you go, guys. I hope that was useful, and I shall check you guys later. Bye.